Hello folks and welcome. So Linux is for all skill levels. My channel's name is, uh, channel's name is uh, Linux Tips for All. So Linux is for all skill levels and all ages. Fedora 42 workstation, brand new. I kind of like their installer if you haven't seen that. It's very intuitive and very nice. Another thing that Fedora has is some nice tools for you. If you're trying to do a little bit of simple file sharing, uh, you can do that with a mouse click. Also, if you want to run uh, SSH server side of it, you can also do that with a mouse click along with SFTP. I'm filming in Wayland today in 4K mode. Welcome, folks. The uh, subscription logo is in the corner. Well over 550 videos on all kinds of subject matter. I'm kind of known for demoing everything that I talk about, and that's this is no exception. So um, when you are dealing with the settings here, we have Secure Shell sitting here, and generally it's a single click, unlike configuration files for Fedora. We can also share a public folder with one click. Rather easy. Let's talk about that. File manager time. All right, so in either case, our username, control L, is Sam. It's just a made up name. Um, what I'm going to do is first show you the simplest way you can share files, which is a public folder. On your local network, it will show you all the share points. In this case, it's MX99 using SMB, which is Samba shares. It has two of them. I'm going to create something in here, though, that'll look like Samba shares which is a public folder by double clicking and clicking the share settings and only clicking one thing, file sharing, and then clicking that and that and I'm done. Your network should now reflect the username public files on whatever the name of the computer you gave it for Fedora. Okay. I will open the public folder up and let you see there's nothing in here. So I, as the local user, can take documents. Uh, let's take the PDF and I copy it and share it with others on the public folder because it's public on my local network. At the same time, I am now going to move my chair over to a laptop that I have on a, well, local network on another Linux machine. And I'm going to open up Sam's public files and, more importantly, create a folder. Because I can. Currently, it'll say untitled, but I'll rename that to Hello World. Just give me a couple seconds to type it. I can put anything in this folder. Other users can also create their own folders and call themselves uh, Bob or Mary or Sam, whatever. The scary part of this also when you open yourself up for file sharing is depending on the folder settings like this one, you can also delete things. So what I'm going to do here is delete the PDF. It's not deleted permanently because the fact is I have it on my local system. But I'm not allowing the users to delete anything here. I still have this original file. So they're, they're, the container is now here. They're constricted to only this folder. And that's what you want in some cases. But what if you want to remotely control things using Secure Shell? SSH will allow me to create folders in Sam's home folder with any length and also delete files. Well, then we're talking about another option. Right-click Settings. We're now talking SSH, server-side software of Secure Shell. Whenever you are dealing with SSH, there's two different types. Client, which you already have installed and access other computers. And then you have Secure Shell, SSH, server-side software, which you can activate by typing in a password. It's that simple without doing configuration files. 
I do recommend some decent passwords though, folks. You never know. All right, in either case, this is all local stuff. If you don't know about this uh, little uh, hidden folder here called .ssh, your security certificates are normally contained in here. Mine is currently empty. So um, what I'm gonna do here though, is I'm gonna log into a different SSH system. Do I need a SSH server to do this with? Absolutely not. Client is already active, and what I'm gonna do now is turn that off to let you see that I can do this without this at all. So this is how your system comes default. If I type in the address bar, control L, I can type in SFTP, which is part of the SSH stack, colon, two forward slashes, username, and at IP address or the name of the computer. In my case, MX99 is the local machine. I don't have it listed in my host file, so I need to add the dot local on the tail end. And then I can accept the ED25519 certificate. That is the lowest security certificate for this. A lot of the servers on the internet use uh, private and public keys with higher encryption. It's not required on your local network in most cases. MX99 local dot local is translated into 192.168.116. That particular address I know is Ethernet. I have a secondary um, network uh, component on that machine, which is 108, which is Wi-Fi. I'm not using that. So once I hit yes, I need to put in the password because that's the second layer of doing this on your local network. And I do recommend decent passwords. You can see that I can also click on Remember Password. Now it's unlocked. I can also do one more thing, which is called a bookmark, which I'm not. But I will show you the hidden folder called .ssh, that it now has a security certificate information called an ED25519. This is actually a really low security key compared to some of the other stuff that we use on the internet when we use internet servers using public and private keys. In either case, I'll continue having a little fun with this. Control H. Since I'm kind of constrained to the public folder, I can certainly copy documents into there or pictures or music or whatever else. And other users can create also folders here and we can copy them directly back into the local system. What if you want to control these folders, even delete files or create? Well, then we're, then we're talking about SSH, server-side software, which is activated by, in this case, a single click. It's already installed on Fedora. That's all you need, and a password, which is your local password. And I do recommend something decent. Now the magic starts. Or should I say the nightmare starts, maybe, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to create folders in here. Just give me a second. I'm going to do this remotely. Anyways, I will log into this machine remotely. Uh, what was it? Sam, I think I was already using there. Yeah, I just used different uh, usernames. Uh, this one's Fedora dot local. I'm not going to use the regular IP address. I could though. Um, so what I'm going to do here is out of the blue, outside of the public folder, is create a folder. You'll first see an untitled folder up here out of nowhere. And um, then I'll rename it. Test and a bunch of nines to get your attention. All right, there's the folder I just created. I can put anything I want in there. This is outside of our public folder because I have full control of Sam's home folder. I also 
can remotely delete things in his pictures folder. I'm going to delete JPEG 1, 2, and 3 on purpose. 1, 2, and 3. Moving my mouse cursor outside the field, I will let you see this. And this is uh, what I call a scary concept when people think about deleting stuff. I'm doing this all remotely. Now you can see the files now start with 4, 5, and 6. What I need to do now, since I permanently deleted them, I'm going to recopy them back in. Go back to the original folder here. We are on pictures. And now they're back online. One, two, and three. So you can see the scarity. Oh, sorry, scarity. Let's try that again. You can see why people can be scared of doing stuff like that. Because you can delete things in the background. I don't need this thing open to do this with. But more importantly, that's what SFTP and SSH can do for you. I can also run remote commands out of terminal also. Not really going to show that in this video. Thank you for watching.